Hi. In this video lecture, now we will look at optical isomerism of lactic acid and tartaric acid. Although we have done this before, but here we'll again look at these two together, right? Lactic acid is alpha hydroxy propanoic acid. Right, its formula is CH3 CHOH COOH. Right, and this is how you draw it. Right, this is your lactic acid. Right, alpha hydroxy propanoic acid. Right. Now, this is your, we know lactic acid is optically active, right? That means it has D form and L form, right? If you look at the mirror image of this form, it would be, it will look like this. will look like this right and this form is say your L lactic acid right this is your L lactic acid that means levorotatory right and this one is your D lactic acid dextrorotatory and these two are mirror images of each other right and we call these as we call these as enantiomers right enantiomers are optically active isomers right which are mirror images of each other right and d lactic acid it's mainly found in d lactic acid is found in your fats this acid is obtained from fats right and the other acid l lactic acid is obtained from fermentation of sucrose L lactic lactic acid you can get this from fermentation of sucrose sucrose is a carbohydrate and this is obtained from this is your D lactic acid which is obtained from fats right and melting point of both the lactic both type of lactic acid is 26 obtained from fats melting point is 26 degrees celsius and here melting point is 26 degrees celsius right so how many optical how many isomers does it have how many stereo isomers will it have right the number of stereo isomers we know from previous discussion that we have two stereo isomers but there is one way number of stereo isomers would be 2 to the power of n where n stands for the number of chiral carbon here we have only one chiral carbon right in both the type in both type of lactic acids we have we have only one chi uh, chiral carbon right so 2 to the power of 1 2 we have two stereo isomers we know right d form and l form right both have melting point 26 degree celsius now if I mix D lactic acid, D lactic acid plus L lactic acid, what I will get is a racemic, uh, let's like it, it's DL or we also write it as plus minus lactic acid, right, which is a racemic mixture. Right and is optically inactive. Right, and its melting point would be around 18 degrees Celsius. Right, melting point of racemic lactic acid is 18 degrees Celsius, and you find this type of lactic acid in milk, right, in sour milk. 
you can obtain racemic lactic acid you can obtain this racemic acid lactic acid from sour milk right its melting point is 18 degree celsius right i hope this is clear from this lecture we know that we got to know that there is a formula to find the number of stereoisomers which is 2 to the power of n where n stands for the number of chiral carbons right and your propen uh, this is your lactic acid is your alpha hydroxypropanoic acid right and just remember uh, good to know information that d lactic acid is obtained from fats l lactic acid is obtained from sucrose right and melting point of both are 26 degree celsius and when you mix both these what you get is a racemic mixture of dl lactic acid right whose melting point is 18 degree celsius and is found in sour milk now let's quickly look at tartaric acid tartaric acid is dihydroxy succinic acid right ch oh cooh ch oh cooh right and this is your dihydroxy succinic acid h oh this is your h oh c o o h right now to find the number of stereoisomers to find the number of stereoisomers you need to look at one more thing that if the molecule can be divided into exact two halves then it would be having one meso form as well right since this molecule this form cannot be divided into exactly two halves but we'll, we'll, I'll just, we'll just see it in a moment the other form is C O O H O H H right so both these are mirror images these are enantiomers you can see these are mirror images and these are enantiomers right so how many how many chiral carbons you have we have two chiral carbons right and we have two chiral carbons and these two we can see that these are mirror images of one another right now the distribution of groups around you can see the distribution of groups that is hydrogen hydroxyl carboxylic group right is such that each of them rotates the plane of polarized light in the same direction right if uh, right if both the chiral carbons rotate the plane of polarized light right towards right this would be your d tartaric acid right whereas if both will rotate the plane of polarized light towards left then it would be your L tartaric acid right and suppose if the acid is doesn't rotate the plane of polarized light then it would be your meso tartaric acid that we have that we discussed in the previous video lecture right let's draw your meso tartaric acid this is your meso tartaric acid right this can be divided into exactly two halves right and this this is this half 
can be superimposed on this half, right? And these two are exactly same, right? These two are exactly same, right? And on the other hand, if I look at the mirror image, if I look at the mirror image of this, Here, these two mirror images are not superimposable, right? Mirror images, these are, these mirror images are non-superimposable. Right? Now, if you look at this, this form of tartaric acid, Sorry, this should be like this, it should be like this, right? Now you can see this molecule is exactly same as this molecule, right? These, this is, this object, the tartaric acid can be superimposed on its mirror image. If I rotate this tartaric acid, if I rotate this by 128 degrees Celsius, then it will completely overlap on this molecule, right? That means the image is superimposable. The object is superimposable on its mirror image, right? So this, these two molecules are exactly same, right? They, they are not like these two mirror images, which are different because their spatial arrangement of groups is different. Right? So these are DNL tartaric acid. These are enantiomers. But about this form of tartaric acid, this tartaric acid is optically inactive. Right? Why? Because the object can be superimposed on its mirror image. And for an optically active compound, right, the condition is that it should not superimpose on its mirror image. Right? So this can be superimposed on its mirror image if I rotate it by 180 degrees Celsius on its on, on the plane of paper. Right? So this is this can be superimposed on its mirror image. This can be superimposed on its this can be superimposed on its mirror image, right? And since it has a plane of symmetry, this half is exactly same as this half, right? If this will rotate the plane of polarized light towards left, then this will rotate. If this will rotate the plane of polarized light, say towards right, then this will rotate towards left, right? And these types of compounds, right? and is are known as meso compound so this is your meso tartaric acid right that has a plane of symmetry right due to which due to which this can be divided into this acid can be divided into exactly two halves right so if this half is rotating the plane of polarized light towards right this will rotate towards left right so these are the types of tartaric acid right I hope this is clear. Right, you can look at some properties of D and L tartaric acid, right? Like melting point, boiling point, and all. D tartaric acid, L tartaric acid. Right, then other you have is your meso tartaric acid. Right. If you look at its melting point, melting point of D and L is 443, right? Whereas that of meso is 413. This is 443. This is 443. This is 413. Right? You can see the difference in the melting point of meso. And if you talk about its solubility, or let's talk about its density first. Its density is density of D and L form is 1.760 
right for this it is 1.760 1.760 for this for meso it is different right similarly if you talk about its solubility right solubility at 293 kelvin gram per 100 ml right the solubility for this is 137 137 then for meso it would be different right it's 120 for meso it's 120 right similarly if we, if we talk about specific rotation right if you talk about specific rotation specific rotation for d and l form would be plus 12 minus 12 plus 12 degree minus 12 degree right for this is a meso so one is rotating towards left right other is rotating towards left so net rotation would be zero it would be zero right so you can see how meso form is different from other two right i hope this is clear thanks